Appearances were all important to my family. My family never talked much about feelings. We were raised not to show them. It's okay. It's okay. My name is Mary Margaret Carter, and all I ever wanted to be was beautiful. My father always told me I was pretty, but no matter how many times he told me, I never believed him. I wanted to, but every time I looked in the mirror, I saw an ugly person and felt this emptiness inside that his words could never fill. Some of my earliest memories were of my mother spending hours in front of the mirror. She was never satisfied with what she saw. to do with this face when I was your age I had such perfect skin well I guess after a certain point it's all downhill and over the years it was pretty much the same story tell you sweetie it's a never-ending battle from right now not more than 500 calories per day Swear to you, Mary Margaret, those extra five pounds are the hardest to lose. You look great, Mom. Oh, well. I guess I'll just have to grin and bear it. Someone once said that the eyes are the mirror to the soul. When I looked into my eyes, all I saw was darkness. It took me two hours every morning to get to where I could face the world. But no matter what I did to change the way I looked on the outside, it never seemed to affect how I felt on the inside. I always felt scared and alone. Sure, I had friends, but I couldn't talk to them about my feelings any more than I could talk to my parents. Because more than anything, I wanted to fit in. And I knew no one else would understand the way I felt. When I got to high school, looking good was so much a part of being accepted. I had to work harder to hide my feelings about myself. I was sure that everyone would see that I wasn't the together girl that I seemed to be at all. Hey, Mary Margaret. Hey, girl. How you doing? Hi, hon. Late again. So I tried harder to be perfect. And I made the drill team. They had a strict rule about weight. If you gained more than five pounds, you were off the team. I vowed that would never happen to me. Mary Margaret Carter. Talent scouts came to our school all the time, looking for girls to work in local fashion shows. I'm Jenny Dawson. I run a modeling agency here in town. The drill team was a great place to be seen. Ellen Hayes works for you. That's right. And Cheryl McKenzie. I was wondering, do you happen to have a portfolio? No, ma'am, I don't. Well, don't worry about it. Look, here's my card. Why don't you come in and we'll talk about putting one together for you. You mean for modeling? Why not? You're a very pretty young lady. I'm sure we could work together. Well, thanks. Now, you call me on Monday. Okay. Don't forget. I will. Bye. Bye. I started modeling for a local department store. The best thing about it wasn't the extra money or attention. It was learning I could control my weight. The other models gave me tips on how to do it. To drink water before every meal so your stomach would feel full, and to be the last to finish so no one else would know how much you didn't eat. I did everything I could to be the perfect person you always see in the pictures. But I never felt beautiful. While I exercised, a list of calories that I was burning off ran through my head. I knew how many jumping jacks and sit-ups and miles equaled one piece of cheesecake, an ice cream cone, a bag of chips. But to eat the way I wanted would have meant exercising 24 hours a day.
the scale began to determine whether I was going to have a good day or a bad day. Is the car warmed up? Yes, sir. It's right out front of the house. There she is. <laughs> Look at that. How do you manage to do it, Mary Margaret? Always looking so perfect. When my father told me I looked perfect, I knew he was just saying that. The truth was, nothing ever pleased him. My mother never said anything. I could only think that her silence meant she disapproved of me, too. I stole my mother's cigarettes and smoked to keep from eating, but nothing seemed to stop me from wanting to eat all the time. I was desperate to find a way to control my weight. So what about Tim? Are you going to go out if he asks you? Cindy. Well, if I did, I'd have to fast for about two weeks beforehand. <laughs> Well, do you know what Allison Roberts does when she feels fat? The one from Science Lab? Right, the pretty one who eats pizza like every day. Yeah. Well, I heard her telling Annie in the locker room how she does it. It is so gross. What'd she say? <laughs> she gets rid of all the calories after she's done. What are you talking about? That's what she said. She gets them out of her body. How? <laughs> no way. I swear, she said she does it any time she feels like she ate too much. Allison Roberts? Isn't that disgusting? Appearances were more important now than ever. But no matter how much weight I lost, I always saw girls who were thinner. But I was good. I only slipped once on my 18th birthday when I had a piece of chocolate cake. It was the first cake I'd had all year and I exercised all night to burn it off. Hey, Mom. Hey, Dad. I oh, saved you dinner. Oh, I'm sorry, Mom. I already ate. Thought you went straight to work from school. We ordered a pizza at the studio. Huh. Catch you later. I'm gonna go study. Good night, darling. I could eat anything I wanted and then get rid of it. I finally felt like I was in control. It was one of the happiest moments of my life. Uh, honey, are you okay? I'm fine. What are you doing in there? Nothing. Nothing. I'm taking a bath. But the happiness didn't last. Soon I couldn't stop eating. And the more I ate, the more I had to make myself throw up. I was like an addict. I lived for the high I got when I was binging. The only thing that could comfort me was food. It made me numb. I'd eat and eat to fill up the emptiness inside. Hi, Mr. Murphy. You know that I lost three pounds? He <laughs> wants to go probably going to eat away, I swear to God. Mm -hmm. I think I would gain food in my Oh, God. Hey. I told you I was here. Hi, Cindy. Hi, Tim. Hi, Mary Margaret. Hi, Tim. I'll see you guys in study hall. So, what's up? Not much. 
Did you get a haircut? No. Ah, oh, it looks great. <laughs> Thanks. Are you doing anything tonight? Do you have any plans? Um, I don't know what I'm doing yet. Would you like to go to the movies with me? Sure. Great. Pick you up around seven? Okay. Bye. Bye. Oh my gosh, you are so excited. I wanted to look great for my first date with Tim because I wanted to be desired. But the thought of a guy actually touching me made me sick. Hi, I'm here to pick up Mary Margaret. Oh. I believe she's getting ready. How could anyone want to touch my body when it was so ugly and disgusting? When Tim told me I looked great, I knew he'd bought my act like all the others. If he really knew what I was like, he'd be grossed out. So I dumped him before he could dump me. I felt like I was leading this weird double life. On the outside, I was everybody's beautiful girl. But on the inside, everything was dark and twisted and distorted. I felt like a freak. I had been throwing up in jars. It was neater and easier than using the toilet, and my parents stopped asking why I spent so much time in the bathroom. I'd wait till my mother went shopping and the house was empty. Then I'd collect all the jars I filled that day. I brought them to the place where Tim and I went parking. No one ever used it before dark. I'd do my binge shopping in a different town where no one would know me. taking over my entire life, but I couldn't stop. Just the thought of stopping filled me with a terror I couldn't explain. Everything seems to be in order, Mary Margaret. I'll get these medical forms to the university this afternoon. Thanks. You look pretty excited about graduation. Oh, yeah, I can't wait. Let me ask you, are you still modeling? Yes, ma'am, I am. Uh huh. Because you seem to have lost, uh, lost a little weight since your last checkup. And I know the kind of pressure they put you girls under to stay thin. Are you, um, 
Are you on some kind of diet? No, not really. I'm just sort of watching what I eat. You know, some people get so crazy about losing weight that they, uh, they do terrible things to their bodies. They diet, they fast, they torture themselves just for appearance sake. Now, I'm not trying to scare you, Mary Margaret, but I want to be sure that you take care of yourself. I am, Dr. Palmer. I began to see how easy it was to make people believe that I didn't have a problem. Mary Margaret! I reasoned that if the doctor didn't find anything wrong, all the throwing up was okay, because it didn't seem to be hurting me. Come on, it's not my fault you overslept. Sit down, honey. What's up? Your mother asked her to sit down. So? What is it? We want to talk to you, Mary Margaret. We're worried about you. We think that we, just we want to ask. know what's the matter with you. But Mary. I'm sorry. I... We want to talk to you about your problem, Mary Margaret. What problem? Your problem with food. What are you talking about? I went in your room this morning, Mary Margaret. I looked in your closet. <gasps> you had no right to go into my closet. I was putting away your clothes. Look. I could not believe my eyes. Mary. I had to call your father home from the office just to tell me I wasn't losing my mind. You had no right. She has every right. I'm entitled to my privacy. That's not the point. We want you to talk to a doctor. There's nothing to talk to a doctor about. I'm not sick. This is serious, Mary Margaret. It isn't. It we just isn't. want you to talk to the doctor. Hear what he has to say. What kind of a doctor? A psychiatrist. Do you want me to see a psychiatrist? We just want you to get help. Oh, God. I'm scared. How often do you force yourself to vomit? Five or six times a day. Do you ever fast? I used to. A part of me wanted Dr. Malone to see through me. I don't know. To save me from myself. But I fooled him, too. But I don't have to do that anymore. Not since I discovered, you know, my secret. Binging and purging. Because what I wanted more than anything was not to lose that high I only felt when I was binging. I was afraid that without it, my life would go spinning wildly out of control. Anorexia, but predominantly, you're what's called bulimic. What's the difference? Well, anorexics essentially starve themselves. They refuse to maintain a normal body weight. They feel fat even if they're underweight. Bulimics can also go on strict fasts, abuse laxatives, exercise like crazy to keep the weight off. But mainly, you have episodes of binge eating, where you eat everything in sight and then force yourself to throw it up. Sounds like me. It's very common among teenage girls. Can it be cured? It can be brought under control if you're ready to work at it. My parents were relieved someone else was dealing with my problems now, so we could stop talking about them and go back to keeping up appearances. They were so desperate to think I could be cured, they'd believe anything. 
But I wasn't being cured. I was just being a whole lot more careful. I'm not sure which was worse. Living in constant terror that I'd be found out, or the constant terror that I never would be. Graduating high school marked an end to my life as I'd known it in so many ways. I resolved it would mean an end to my bulimia, too. I convinced my parents that I was cured by graduation, and I didn't need to continue therapy when I went away to college. I met Kristen the first month I was in college. Well, this Out of all the thousands of girls there, we somehow found each other. Morsel of food you pass these lips. I've tried that. I've tried everything. Pills, drugs, every crash diet ever invented. I call it scarf and barf. I call it episodes. Somebody's been to a shrink. Yeah. Have you? About six of them. And none of them helped you? Oh, they all did. Every one of them cured me. <laughs> <laughs> Kristen was the first person who ever really knew me. I could tell her anything. We spent all our time together. We never dated. If a boy asked us out, we'd freak. The idea of having to eat a normal meal with someone else in public was scary enough, without having to worry if the guy would want to kiss goodnight and smell the vomit that was always on our breath. When I saw Kristen after intercession, I couldn't believe my eyes. Kristen? Hi. Hey. It's so good to see you. Oh, my God. She was emaciated. You. I was horrified. You are so thin. But a small part of me couldn't help feeling jealous. I didn't eat a thing all month except popcorn. Air popped. And then I got rid of it right away. So what are you down to? 86. <laughs> it's the first time I've ever felt like I was really thin. Well, you are. And I'm not stopping. How much more do you want to lose? There's no such thing as thin enough, Mary Margaret. <sighs> Two weeks later, Kristen had lost another four pounds. I had to work harder just to keep up with her. Kristen? 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 They said she had starved to death. I didn't want to end up like my best friend. But I knew now I could never be thin enough to be happy and still be alive. After Kristen's death, I took my phone off the hook and locked myself in my room for a week. Someone called security. 
my family was notified. Mary Margaret! Okay, I've got the message. I finally admitted I was seriously ill, and if I didn't get help, I would die. Dr. Malone made arrangements for me to check into a clinic for people with eating disorders. I no longer had to hide my terrible secret. I'm the real Mary Margaret Carter. It's been four years since I broke down and faced my problem. Since that time, I've worked very hard at getting my eating disorder under control. I'm finally understanding why this happened to me and why it happens to so many people. I've learned that people develop eating disorders, such as anorexia and bulimia, to cope with difficulties in their lives. Things like peer pressure, broken homes, sexual abuse, and other emotionally disturbing situations. Women especially are vulnerable to eating disorders because of the constant pressure to be thin and beautiful. The most important thing I can say to anyone suffering from an eating disorder is that you are not alone and you can get help. I didn't know that then. There are many places you can go for help. Therapists, support groups, clinics, the hardest part is asking for help. I urge you to be brave and ask. It's worth your life.